there's a kind of underlying assumption in our communities that marriages that don't last from you know the first person that you've married all the way up to old age if you're not with that same person and you don't live your whole life with them um, that something is wrong with you so I can remember the shame that I felt and the guilt after I got divorced there's a kind of underlying assumption in our communities that marriages that don't last from you know the first person that you've married all the way up to old age if you're not with that same person and you don't live your whole life with them um, that something is wrong with you and that isn't from Islam you know Allah SWT wouldn't have given us divorce had that not been allowed and for good reasons so I wanted to kind of address this idea that a lot of people have around this perfect marriage it's the perfect lie um, and it doesn't exist okay so when I get couples coming in to see me oftentimes I can give examples of, of my marriage and tell them all the great things that are happening in my marriage but I shouldn't be taken as a role model and I think this is a trap that we can all fall into people can present to us an idea of how their marriage is and we can idealize and see them and think ah that's the perfect marriage that's what I want or look at how her husband treats her that's the perfect marriage or look at how she behaves towards her husband that's the perfect marriage but it doesn't exist because he and you are, are unique you know as a couple you're unique you bring your own character in and they are a couple with their own needs and their own way of doing things and also although on the surface you might see that they're great we don't know what's happening behind closed doors so that's the first thing there is no such thing as a perfect marriage and there should not be anybody except the Prophet ﷺ as a role model for marriage the second thing I think that's really important to know is that yes we might have seen in gone generations where people stayed in marriages for an entire lifetime but we also don't see that those women often and men often stayed because of stigmas that were not Islamic you know we, once you're married you never leave it's shameful on the family for you to leave you have children so therefore you have to stay um, divorce is, is stigmatized even if you get abused because you want to make the marriage last forever the subject of abuse is often over often overlooked and not addressed because what are you going to do either you're abused and you leave or you make your marriage work and the fear of that perfect marriage not happening makes you stay and so we might see and we might see these celebrations of people married 30 40 50 60 years but again that's not necessarily a true encounter of having that perfect marriage you know, we can stay for our children, but if we're dysfunctional, we're arguing, our mannerisms in the home, where there's abuse in the home, and we're saying we're staying for those children, are those children really benefited? Because they learn what we do through our actions, they see us be dysfunctional, and then they go into marriages with those same patterns, they carry that for generation after generation. And the purpose of marriage, Allah SWT tells us, is a test, and it's supposed to be tranquility you know we're supposed to be a place of tranquility we're supposed to be garments to one another and when we wear garments they should be loose fitting not too tight not too loose you know they should be comfortable they shouldn't make us feel itchy or too hot or too cold they should make us feel proud to wear it you know something that you feel good in um, there shouldn't be things that attract too much attention like boastfulness we don't you know clothes should be something that's very personal to us and therefore I really love that analogy that's given but we're so busy on what people think that we don't focus on what we should be doing in our own unique marriage another thing that I know personally that I've felt over the years is being a therapist, working with couples, having gone through a divorce, oftentimes I've had people say to me, well, why should I take you know, advice from you? Um, in my earlier days, I've, I know I've witnessed this, like, why should I take advice from you since you've had a divorce? And, and honestly, what I would really now, as I've matured much more in my work, 
is that that was a really naive perspective to come from because somebody going through a divorce will have immense insight into conflict into if they've done the work on themselves the self-awareness they're going to be people who have had to have that ability and that process to decide if they're going to live with their children um, how they're going to cope in their life the the choices that they're going to make about moving on so there's there's this insight that you couldn't possibly get from somebody who hadn't been divorced and that's just equally as important in this work that we do to help couples because couples are often in conflict when they come to see me um, and there's a lot of couples that are in conflict that they don't come to see you they carry on with those conflicts thinking there isn't a solution and we just have to get on with it but there is solutions there are ways to make it better but I think when you look at it that way that if somebody has had a divorce or hasn't had a divorce that it impacts on their ability to make a marriage work it's not true because there is no perfect marriage what I'd like to follow on from that is just to look at this idea also, I've noticed this a lot happen in in our communities, that one person will shame another. If somebody has does have problems, oftentimes the person who wants to show that their marriage is working will shame the person whose marriage is probably struggling. And it will be like things like, you know, you're not listening to him or you are not trying hard enough, you know, or you, there's something wrong with the person and that's why it's not working. And maybe there are things that need to change, but we really have to stop this kind of arrogance that we might have about ourselves. Because if your marriage is good, this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know. And for those that are struggling, remember, marriage is half of faith. If you are in a marriage, number one, you know, if you're married or you're thinking of getting married, number one, you have to to approach that marriage as a test. It's half of your faith. And when and what's going to be tested most is your character, okay? Who you are as a person. Because you have to work with another person with different beliefs, different values, different characteristics, okay? And if you don't realize that it's a test, you're going to keep looking for that perfection that doesn't exist, okay? But if you approach it as, look, we're going to get challenges, you know, this is part of why we're married, because we're trying to achieve something great. Jannah is something great. And two people who who want to really understand love would understand the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the types of people that can say, if we are not treating each other well, we have to look at that because one day we will answer to Allah. If things are not going well between us, instead of blaming each other, Looking at why this behavior happens in me, why this behavior happens in you, and having that maturity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, and coming together for that reason. If you are going to stay for the children, again, it has to be rooted in Islam. It has to be that, you know, our responsibility, we're like shepherds, and our responsibility is with our flock. And those children are ours, and on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us what we did with those children. And it's up to us then to answer to Allah. And the only way Allah is going to know is our sincerity and our effort. So you can't just say, I'm just staying for the children as if the children are an excuse. If you're genuinely going to do it for those children, then you have to really look at yourself and step up and say, okay, if we do want to do it for these children, what's the best thing that we can do for these kids? If you're able to work it together, if you're able to, you know, your character, you know, look at each other's character, look at yourself, you know, with maturity, without defense, without criticism, without being about ego and nafs, and say, look, we're doing this because this is the next generation of Muslims. And they will go to Allah on the Day of Judgment, and they will be a witness for us or against us. Once you start shifting your mindset to that, things go on a different level. But when you're still at that superficial level, Oh, we've been get to, we've been together five years. Let's just celebrate. Which is there's nothing wrong with that. We should celebrate the time that we've been with our spouses. But when we're struggling, and then the anniversary comes up, and it's about the anniversary and not about the work that we're doing, there's a real disconnect between what's really happening and what we're showing the world. So this conversation was really about that. The perfect lie is the perfect marriage. It doesn't exist. Yet at the same time, if you put Allah first, 
you both work together, you set goals for yourselves, you know, you'll know that with him helping me, I can get to Jannah, with her helping me, I can get to Jannah, and in every moment we could be in worship, if we're good to each other, if we're kind to each other, our children could be witnesses for us, you know, and they could elevate our status in Jannah, and we think of Allah first, it makes shaitan weak, because remember, at the end of the day, shaitan loves to cause dissension between husband and wife, and if we wake up each morning being grateful and saying, how can we just get through today? How can we be helpers to one another today? And make that your perfect marriage. Make it for the sake of Allah. Marriage is not based on knowledge. They're not based on how much I know. People can know in theory, but once you're in something, it's emotion, it's psychology. You know, it's our level of like awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's so many factors that make that marriage work. And so it's not so much about intellect, like how intelligent we are. We could have a, a scientist and a doctor be married and, and squabbling all day. You know, you could have two really simple people, you know, who might not be intelligent with, in terms of like academia, and they're doing fine, you know. So it's not to do with that. It, it, it doesn't discriminate, you know. Marriages are not discriminated based on your educational background. It's based on your emotional intelligence and your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your sincerity and your ability to say, if after I do everything and I can honestly say that I worked on my character, I did all that I could and then you genuinely don't get on with this person, then because of your tawakkul with Allah, because of your faith with Allah, because you're doing it for the right reasons, then that divorce happens for the right reasons. You know, that actually, us being separate, those children will see less conflict, we can actually keep them more secure keep them safer by us being separate you know certain parts of our personalities won't come through for whatever reasons when you put two personalities together it explodes and that can happen and no matter what you do it can keep happening but as long as you know in yourself that I looked at myself I put Allah first I was sincere you know and you genuinely do that work and if after that point that it doesn't work then it's still for the sake of Allah. That separation is still for the sake of Allah to say, we have to save our deen. You know, this is supposed to be tranquil and you have the right to have a tranquil life and perhaps somebody else will provide that for you that this person couldn't, but there should not be this shame attached to it.